Hi, it's Will from StormTheCastle.com, and here on YouTube, you know me as Epic Fantasy. And this is a mead making video. I haven't done one in a while. It feels good to get to the mead. And uh, what we've done here is we made several batches of mead fruit mead or a mellow mel. It's called a mellow mel. Uh, we made peach and pineapple. And in this video, I'm going to show you an updated technique for making a fruit mead. This is a little bit different. It's a little bit safer for us, particularly if you're a beginner. Let's do the intro and then we'll do it. Dioramas, origami, catapults, and treasure chains, telescopes, terrariums, bonsai trees, and paper games, swords and shields, and real blacksmithing, model box, and animation. I teach you how to feel creation. StormyCastle.com. Let's make something. Okay, first let me show you the traditional way that I usually make mead and people usually make mead. You gather together all your ingredients and all your materials and all your equipment, right? You mix some honey and water. You pitch your yeet, you put your fruit in there. In this case, it's peaches. About a pound of it per gallon. Pitch your yeast. Seal it up, put an airlock on it, and let it ferment. That's a typical way to do it. And then every 30 days or at different intervals, let it ferment. It looks beautiful. And at, at different intervals, you would rack it or siphon it into a new container to get it off of all the junk in there because it will have a lot of sediment. But we're going to do it a little bit of a different way that's a little bit better, in my opinion. So let's start into it. I'll take you through it step by step. First thing you do whenever you're making mead is you sanitize everything. Use some kind of a wine sanitizer. Uh, we're using Easy Clean. It's really nice. And this is not, this is not a, a cleanser. It's a sanitizer to kill any bacteria. So for one gallon of mead, we use one quart of honey. Put that in a pan. Add about a quart of water just to thin it out. And then heat it up. No need to boil it, just heat it up. And what we're doing here is we're homogenizing it, kind of. We're making it homogenous so it'll be thinner and easier to handle. It'll, it's mixed well and it's easy to work with. So let's, um, we do something called starting the yeast. You add the, your yeast to warm water and you let it sit for a period of time, say maybe about, usually about 15 minutes. And then it starts to bubble like that. That is starting the yeast. Uh, yeast comes with the directions on how to do that. So let's make make up the batch like this. So notice we get no, we have no fruit here. That's right. That's is the new way. So put your honey and water mix in a jug of a jug or a cowboy they call it. Pitch your yeast once it's ready, and then fill it up with the remaining water. So it's as if we're making a plain old mead with no fruit in it. And then um, shake it up pretty well to get it all nice and even. Add your airlock. And let it ferment. Typically about from two weeks to four weeks. Just let it go. See? It's looking good. Within, Usually within 24 hours it starts doing this. It's looking pretty good. It's a nice vigorous ferment. See ya? So after 30 days, well, two weeks to four weeks, depends. It can vary from recipe to recipe. You siphon it or rack it into a fermentation pail. And the reason why we're using a pail is because now we're going to add the yeast, uh, excuse me, the fruit. See, so what we've done here is for about a month, we let the mead ferment, and it's built up an alcohol tolerance. And that's important. See, the, the, this here is the junk, the leads that's left over after the ferment. That is dead yeast. This is why we rack to get it away from all of that. But now that there's an alcohol content built up in it, we can add our fruit. And there's very little risk of bacteria on the fruit or something like that spoiling the batch. So that's the change in technique that we're using. Don't start out with your fruit. Add it about 30 days later. So cut yourself up about a pound of your fruit of choice. We made, um, here is, this is peach, we also made a pineapple. Stir it up gently, because that's now a mead. Now, it's very young, but there's alcohol in there, it's been fermenting for about a month, and now we're pitching in our fruit. Seal it back up again, and let it ferment again. Let it continue with its ferment, this is called the secondary ferment, for roughly another 30 days. There you go. Let's look at those in the back, those are the batches. Looking good. It shouldn't be as vigorous as it was because a lot of the sugars have already been transformed into alcohol. 
So after 30 days, we racked it off again. Get it off the fruit. The longer you keep the fruit in there, the more fruit flavor the mead will have. But we get it rid of get get it out of that pail after 30 days and into a regular carboy, a little gallon jug. See, that's pineapple. So now it has the fruit flavor in it. See, see the junk that's left over? Here's the peaches. And it's very slushy. We're getting we're getting it away from all of that. So now we go through our normal process. 30 days later, rack it again. And see how the meat is getting clearer? See, it's starting to look like a wine there. We rack it again to get it off of all of that junk in the bottom. So you continue racking for as many times as necessary, or as, as often as you want to clear it, as get it as clear as you want. Some people don't rack. Some people only rack once. So let's bottle it. Sanitize your bottles, just like you do with everything else. With a sanitizer. And then siphon into those bottles. Looks good. I, I love the color of this. You know, this mead has a wonderful color. And you can see the difference between the peach and the pineapple. Really wonderful. So we did multiple rackings. Now that mead or wine is ready to be bottled. So we're filling the bottles. Those are 750 milliliter bottles. And if you're real careful about this throughout the whole process, you should be able to get about four bottles from one gallon. I got about three and three quarter bottles. Looks good. The next thing we're going to have to do is cork it. See, they look good. See, a three and seven eighths bottles maybe. We're also going to wax these, and I'll show you that too. The corks, it's standard procedure to soften those corks up a bit so they go in gently and then expand. So what you do is you steam them for about five minutes. You know, boil water, turn the water off, put the corks in there and let, it, let them sit so the steam softens them. And then we put them in the double lever corker, like this, see that? This is a really handy thing. Now you don't need one of these, but it's really handy. And then cork them. That's it. You know, how long did this total process? I've been waiting on this video for a long time because I'd take some video and then a month later we'd rack and I'd take some more videos. So it took quite a while to finally get this video done. And there you go. The bottles are corked. Now the only thing remaining is waxing them, which is kind of nice and very optional. But you can buy wax that is specifically made for corking. See, bottle seal wax beads. You put them in a metal can, and that metal can is in boiling water. So what that does is it melts it. See it? Then you dip and twirl the end of the bottle in that wax. And that's it. Look at that. That bottle is waxed. Very nice. Comes in all different kinds of colors, too. Very nice. One more thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to stamp that bottle, which is kind of a neat little thing with the wax seal set. This is a different kind of wax because it has a different purpose. So it has a different consistency, and it dries differently, and it cools differently. and But it comes with a little, this wax sealing stamp kit. It's really kind of neat, you know, because it's old-fashioned like mead should be. But you melt the wax on the bottle like this. Get a nice big dollop on there. Then you press the stamp on it. Um, it's a fun video. I had a lot of fun with this. Um, I have a lot of mead making stuff on my website at stonethecastle.com. Check it out if you're interested in making mead. It's a wonderful drink. It's alcoholic, in case you didn't know. It is, um, you know, wine fermented from honey. Then it's an ancient drink. It hasn't changed a whole lot in the past thousands of years. There you go. It looks really good.
Thanks for watching that video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you're a subscriber, thanks for subscribing to my channel. If you're not a subscriber, hit that button. I always have lots of fun and interesting and very creative projects. I do two new ones every week. As an example, here's a couple more videos you might want to watch.